While the name implies something custom or scary, custom fields are not difficult to grasp at all, and once you do, you'll find countless use cases for them. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you why taking the time to learn about custom fields is gonna help you take all of your WordPress websites to the next level. We're gonna start with the basics and work our way up, so let's go ahead and jump right in. First of all, I want to chat about the what and the why of custom fields, and later we'll take a look at the how. Custom fields are essentially just a way to hold extra data about your website in an organized way. So you can do a lot of things with them, but the most important and fundamental thing is that you're going to be able to organize your site's content and control it better than you ever have before. As an example, you might have a listing of team members on your website and you want to display their job title. Now, of course, you could stick that at the top of the content of that person's post, but then you run into issues where sometimes the formatting is off and the second line runs up against the job title, you can't filter by it, and there's a lot of other downsides to not having that piece of information in a custom field. In this example, if we set that job title up as a custom field, we can introduce a lot of extra control where, for instance, in the back end, somebody has to fill in the job title for a specific team member so it can't be forgotten. We can control where that piece of information displays, could be before the person's name, after the name, at the very end, anywhere we want, and we can also do really cool and kind of next level features like filter by that information. So you could filter the entire job page by board of directors, for example. Keep in mind, this is just one example of probably hundreds I could come up with off the top of my head. I create custom fields for almost every site I work with, in some cases, it might have one custom field, and in other cases, I might have 20, 30, or even more, depending on the size and complexity of the website. For example, on my own website, jonathanjernigan.com, I use a custom field to hold the YouTube video link that automatically gets brought into my templates. So in that case, it's just one simple field. Then in other cases, like for a car dealership, you might have eight or 10 different custom fields for a given post type to hold things like fuel type and mileage, transmission, all those kinds of data points that you would want held in an organized way, and that's where custom fields come in. So now that you know the general concept, let's go ahead and take a look at how to create a custom field. The first thing we wanna do here is go ahead and install advanced custom fields. This is kind of the industry standard way to create custom fields. There are other options out there, but ACF is free and the free version is incredibly powerful. So we'll go to plugins and add new, and we'll just type in the word advanced. That's good enough. And what we'll see is that advanced custom fields pops up here. You can see 2 million active installs. So we'll go ahead and install and activate this now. Now that ACF is installed and activated, let me share just briefly what we're actually going to do here. So I have this custom post type called events and in it, I have just a very simple template that's displaying the featured image, title, date, and so on. And what we wanna do is attach a custom field to these posts so that we can add the address. Now we can take that custom field and display it wherever we want. If it makes sense to get rid of the date and maybe replace that with the address, we can do that. We could put it between the date and the body copy wherever we want because again, custom fields have tons of flexibility. So what we need to do, first of all, is go ahead and just take a look at the ACF button now. And inside of the field group, we'll go ahead and click on add new. Field groups are just the segmentation, kind of grouping together your fields. So sometimes you might have maybe like a section for one particular post type and maybe some users. So field groups are really good for organization. Here in this case, we'll just go ahead and call this event data. Doesn't really matter, just an admin side name for you. And you can see that the first kind of text field is already presenting itself to us. So what we need to do first of all is take a look at these field types. Now text is extremely versatile. It's under the basic section, but it's honestly far from basic. What you can do with the text field is really, really immense. And in this case, it's just gonna hold our address for those posts. Now. One thing that I wanted to quickly point out is that under the choices section, you can see there's select, checkbox, and radio. Those are also super useful and there's tons of power hidden in those. But again, we're just gonna stick with text for this particular example. So what I do now is give this a field label of just something like you know address or maybe like event address. Then what we could do is tab down or just click in that field and you can see it's going to fill in the field name for us. These do need to be unique, so maybe consider thinking about the names if you're gonna to have tons of them on your site. Now what we need to do is tell ACF where to make this field group pop up. So we'll scroll down just a little bit to the location rules, and by default it's set to the post type is equal to post, which of course is just your kind of standard blog area here. But what I wanna do is make it pop up on my events custom post type. 
So I'll say post is equal to event, and then we'll just save the changes. Now, custom post types are kind of the next level and evolution of this. So if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out my Dynamic Data Made Easy course where you can learn tons more about this. Continuing on our journey here though, what we're gonna do is go click on events. Let's just choose our farmer's market post. And when we take a look here, we can see we have the title and the body copy as well as the featured image we already looked at before. And then down here at the bottom, we have our event address custom field. So we've now officially created our first custom field and we can see it there. So it's ready for data. How cool is that? So in this event address field, we can put anything we want because it's text. So if you wanted to put a full street address, you could do that. Or maybe in this example, like a local blog site, you might know that it's in this town. So we could just say something like 15 Maple Street or something. We'll just go ahead and save this. And now that particular piece of data is attached to this specific post. So if I return to one of my other events here and I edit this, we can see that the event address is blank because that field is attached to this specific post. So maybe our city council address is 100 Main Street or something like that. So we can save this in there. And then last but not least, maybe our end of summer festival is going to be somewhere at like the, the fairgrounds. So we could just type in something like fairgrounds. Again, we'll just click on save. And now there's custom field data attached to all three of our posts. So we need to actually display this on the front end. This is where things will differ slightly depending on what theme and what page builder you might be using. Some have better integrations with ACF than others, but they all typically do because ACF really is kind of the gold standard of custom fields in WordPress. In my case, I use generate press as my theme and generate blocks to build the content. So what I would need to do is actually go edit my generate press element, which is my events archive template. Generate press elements are extremely powerful and I have a lot of content on that, including a course that covers generate press. So check that out if you're interested. What I wanna do here is just edit my events archive template. And when it loads, what I could do is let's just say, like I mentioned earlier, let's say for example, we wanna replace the date here with our custom field we created. In generate blocks, what I do is just select that element come over here to the dynamic data section, and we would toggle this on. The data source is current post, which is perfect, and content source, we'd wanna change from post date to post meta. Now you might hear custom fields referred to as meta or custom meta sometimes, same exact thing. So post meta, we would just click in here, and what we could do is just type in our field name before, which was just event underscore address, and press enter. We'll go ahead and just save this template and let's refresh on the front end. And now our custom field is showing on all of those posts. How freaking cool is that? Like I already mentioned, this is a very simple and straightforward example, but you can see how this means we have complete control over how this data is organized. And again, we could filter by it if we integrated something like WP Grid Builder or some other third-party filtering plugins. The best part about this in a template setup like this is if we wanted to, we could move the event address even up above or below. So, you know, if we wanted to save, this is not going to look quite right because of the formatting, but you can see when we do that, everything is reflected across our whole site. That change we've made is automatically applied to each of these, and now we don't have to go manipulate every single post to modify that function. So this can be just a huge time saver and a huge organizational thing, if nothing else than you know, giving you more control down the line. Learning custom fields really can make you feel like you're cracking a secret code inside of WordPress. And if you're interested in learning more, I have a mini course called Dynamic Data Made Easy. We cover lots of different examples of ACF fields, how to create custom post types, and a ton of other really powerful things that'll help you take your WordPress websites to the next level. There really is a ton of power to unlock when it comes to custom fields and post types. So if you're interested in learning more, definitely don't miss that. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you'd like to stay in touch with me, you can subscribe here on YouTube or subscribe to my newsletter on my website at the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.